On top of that, Pranakan Kue is one of the famous food served as dessert in Asian cuisine. Usually, the Baba and Nyonya prefer something sweet after their meals. Pranakan Kue is made somewhat similar to the Malay Kue. However, there are differences and these can be easily identified. Another specialty of the Pranakan dessert is the chendol, which is also known to be made by the Indians. The Indian chendol has grass jelly of pastel color, while the grass jelly for Pranakan chendol is a transparent green. Mounted on shaved ice, it is splashed with condensed milk and gula melaka. It tastes better when the ice melts with the syrup and santan. Regardless of the dessert or main dishes, Pranakan food is not only enjoyed by the Pranakans, it is also highly being sought after by the non-Pranakans, especially in Malaysia and Singapore, because the taste is local, yet unique and delicious at the same time. Pranakan culture was spread to the straight states, namely Penang, Malacca and Singapore since the 15th century. The assimilated cultures of Malay and Chinese created another culture that enriched our country's variety of traditional food, which is highly in demand by tourists who visit the Straits States. Just like any other races in Malaysia, the Peranakan founded associations in Penang and Malacca. However, a number of Peranakans who have moved out to the city found that there is no place for them to practice their culture like a big family. Recently established Persatuan Peranakan Baba Nyonya Kuala Lumpur dan Selangor provided a shelter for the Peranakans in Kuala Lumpur so that their culture would not be lost. Okay, um, the Persatuan Peranakan Baba Nyonya Kuala Lumpur and Selangor uh, was formed last year, 2008. Uh, so we are considered the new baby on the block. Uh, basically, number one, we want this to be a place where the Pranakans in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor can meet. Uh, uh, also, an opportunity for us to link with various uh, cultural bodies, with uh, government ministries, departments, uh, so that we can have uh, joint activities to preserve, to promote the culture. Mr. Cedric noted that one can be considered as Peranakan for the association if he or she has one sixteenth of the blood descendants. That means if your ancestors is a Baba or Nyonya, you are entitled to be a Peranakan. However, the association is open to non-Peranakans too. This is to promote the culture in a more effective way. Although the association is new, they are also committed to trying out new solutions to revive the culture. In Mecca, uh, even in Penang for that matter, they, they have their own uh, association building. So they can organize, uh, we call it social activities, where they can encourage fellow Pranakas to come to meet, so they can socialize. Socialize in the sense that they can sing, they can uh, cook, they can do various projects together. Uh, the only problem I think they have is right now how what they can do in terms of um, not only preserving but you got to open up. You see, you want if you want to preserve something, you must let other people to try to learn. Then when that became part of their lives, then you can actually see a preservation. It is undeniable that the culture which started since the 18th century is slowly fading away. Nowadays, the intermarriage between a local Malay and a pure Chinese is no longer known as a Peranakan marriage since Malaysia gained its independence. In other words, the limited population of the Peranakans results in the possibility that the Peranakans may one day be extinct. I guess if you make effort in terms of uh, promoting, you must inculcate this culture into your next generation. Uh, reason lost is because parents do not make the effort to actually tell or to make them practice this during their younger, younger times, you know, during their younger days. So if the parents make an effort, yes, we can see certain forms of tradition being preserved. The other issue that the Peranakans in Malaysia is facing is the popularity of the Peranakans' culture in their neighbouring country, Singapore. The history behind the origins of the Peranakans in Singapore is vague. Nonetheless, many people believe that the Peranakans originated from Malaya. 
Complaint letters were sent to newspapers upon the opening of Singapore's Asian Civilizational Museum. The comments showed the discontent of Malaysians on the Singaporean Museum, where they claim that the Peranakan culture has been taken away by Singapore. How true is this? The, the, the core, the deepest, uh, the root of the Peranakan culture still lies in Penang and Malaysia. It is being practiced to the, I would say, sometimes uh, to a full extent, which Singapore does not have. But the problem right now is Singapore is trying to come in here and to learn. So when they learn, they will try to make it theirs. But if we don't take care of our parts by, by continuing to preserve it, to brand it as ours, then of course it will be lost already. So it seems that the culture has been widely spread rather than being taken away by Singapore. Indeed, Singapore has been putting much effort to promote the Peranakan culture over the years. Uh, Singapore's case is different because the, the Singapore government is actually branding Peranakan as theirs, which I find it lacking on our side here. So the Singapore government see it as a tourism marketing tool. And then with the government support in terms of providing the museums, the recent Pranakan Museum is really fantastic. They, they really go all out to source for the best in the market. So that's how you get the public involved into uh, the museum. On top of that, Singapore Media Corp has recently released a 34-episode Chinese drama series called The Little Nyonya, which made headlines as one of the biggest productions in the Media Corp history. It was broadcasted to several countries including Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, France, and Hong Kong. Drawing over a million viewers, most of the scenes were shot from heritage houses in Malacca and Penang. The series is sponsored by Media Development and Authority of Singapore. Uh, yes, they have, I would say in the terms of providing programs to, to create, to brand Peranakan culture in Singapore, yes, the Singapore government has done a lot to promote that. So, but because they know that, that Peranakan branding can sell. The only problem is our government here, we don't see that way. To be more precise, the government has beautified both Malacca and Penang after both states became recognized as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. But Mr. Cedric does not see this optimistically. To him, accrediting the towns only turns it into a tourism site without preserving the culture. The UNESCO accreditation would have uh, brought world recognition in terms of the sites. Okay. Um, of course, the government, local government has got to do more than just promotion of the sites. They've got to do also promotion in terms of preserving old trades, cultures within the area, um, preserving all this, to have proper guidelines in terms of conservation work in the, in, the, in the area. The objectives now has got to be realigned again to preserve the original state of the place, actually. That should be the original. That should be the, the crux, the, the main objective of the UNESCO uh, accreditation. Thus, it seems like the government and the Persatuan Peranakan need each other in order to bring the culture to another step further. Since the birth of the Peranakan community, it has been rich in culture, traditions, and culinary history. However, it is slowly losing grip as time passes by. The limited number of population in Malaysia makes it harder for the Peranakan culture to survive. Despite the steady disappearing of this once thriving culture, one aspect of the Peranakan culture that is persistently sustaining itself is the Peranakan delicacy. The unique Baba Nyonya community of Malaysia was once seen as a significant community in Malaysian society. Without concerted efforts from both the government and the Peranakan people, their culture will slowly die into obscurity. Needless to say, their culture is a very good example of one Malaysia. The Peranakans practice their mixture of British, Chinese and Malay cultures effortlessly. Multicultural and in harmony with each other, this is the embodiment of the Peranakan people.